So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar jointly organized by IEEE India Council and IEEE Kochi subsection. In the pursuit of academic excellence, many aspiring engineers and technologists seek avenues for higher education that provide not only advanced knowledge, but also esteemed credentials. Among the various paths available, the IIC, IITs, NIT, IAST, and IIITs stand out as the premier institutes renowned globally for their quality education, cutting edge research, and vibrant academic environment. To shed light on the pathway to pursuing higher studies at these institutes, IEEE India Council, in collaboration with IEEE Kochi Subsection, proudly presents a webinar titled Higher Educations in IIC, IITs, NITs, IIIT, and IST through GATE. This webinar aims to provide invaluable insights and guidance to students and professionals aspiring to embark on the journey of academic enrichment at one of these India's most prestigious institutes. With the Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering, or GATE, being the gateway to admissions into various postgraduate programs, understanding its importance, preparation strategies, and the plethora of opportunities it unlocks is of paramount importance for the aspirants. Through this webinar, attendees will delve into the comprehensive understanding of the GATE examinations, its significance, and the array of disciplines and specializations offered at premier institutes. Distinguished speakers today present are academicians from IIT and NIT and will share their profound knowledge and experience, offering invaluable insights in the academic landscape and research opportunities available at Premier Institutes of India. The schedule for today is as follows. For the first 30 minutes, Dr. Venkatesh, the professor at IIT Gauti will address the audience. The next 30 minute session will be done by Prasemir, professor at NIT Calicut. The last 30 minutes are for the Q&A. During the session itself, if the audience need to have any doubts to be clarified, you can post it in the chat box. It will be addressed during the Q&A session. I now welcome Dr. John Jose of IIT, IEEE India Council and Associate Professor at IIT Gohati to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Venkatesh. Over to you, Dr. John. Thank you, Professor Rekha. I hope I am audible. Yes, John. Okay. So, on behalf of IEEE India Council, we would like to express our thanks to IEEE Kochi subsection for coming forward and joining hands with us in organizing this program. So, a big thanks to Dr. Rekha, Dr. Varun, and all the team from there in organizing this event. And it is our privilege to have uh, two eminent academicians of our country in uh, discussing the importance of GATE and higher education to us. First is Professor Venkitesh and Professor Samir. So as mentioned by Professor Rekha, let me introduce about Professor Venkitesh. Uh, he is a professor and also currently serving as the head of Department of Computer Science Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. He served as the organizing vice chair of uh, GATE 2018 and he was part of uh, the organizing team of GATE from 2017 to 2020. He was also the organizing chairman of JAM 2023. And he has played an important role in coordinating and conducting this important exam, Pan India Wise, over the last half a decade. And uh, he has played a pivotal role in the policy formulation of the COAP, which he will discuss in his upcoming talk. He holds an MTech degree from IIT Kanpur and PhD degree from IIT Madras. We are extremely privileged to have with us Professor Venkatesh with an accomplished track record of organizing GATE exam pan-India-wide and coordinating the zonal activities. So I would request Professor Venkatesh uh, to take over the session. Over to you, Dr. Venkatesh. So first, let me, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. So first, let me thank uh, the IEEE India Council and IEEE Kerala section for organizing this 
very important session. Uh, I hope this session by both of us would be useful to all the participants. And uh, thank you, John, for the introduction. Uh, so, in the next, uh, you know, 25 uh, minutes, I would be talking of uh, the higher education opportunities in the CFTIs, particularly emphasizing on IITs, where I have uh, experience as well as knowledge. Uh, I will talk about uh, various masters and uh, uh, PhD, direct PhD programs available for undergraduate uh, students. And uh, I will uh, talk about how uh, you should uh, consider, how you should look at these programs, what are the differences between different programs, etc. And talk about different opportunities available for the undergraduate students who have uh, qualified in the GATE examination. I will also talk about uh, the uh, differences in the process as far as the IIT's admission is concerned. Uh, because I understand that my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Samir from NIT, would be talking more about uh, the process of admission, which is handled jointly uh, by a single portal uh, for the NIT system, whereas for the IIT system, it is completely different. So I will highlight uh, what is different for the IIT system as far as the admission is uh, concerned. Okay? And, um, and then at the end, we will uh, take up uh, if you have any question and answers. Uh, so, let me begin. So, first of all, uh, the important point to note about uh, GATE examination, as it is always written in the information brochure, is that mere qualification in GATE does not make you eligible for admission to MTech programs. So, that is the first thing that the students should remember. It is not that clearing GATE would automatically ensure admission or a seat in uh, one of the higher education programs. GATE is conducted primarily as a national level competitive examination to benchmark the undergraduate education in the country and to tell the student or the applicant where he stands in the uh, pool of applicants who have written this examination. That helps the IIT system to understand uh, what is the level of uh, you know, expertise that a student has in the undergraduate uh, discipline. And as you are aware, GATE exam is conducted as of uh, this year in 30 different papers uh, as they call as they are called and these are uh, uh, not necessarily mapped to the mtech program titles there are many papers where you would not have direct mtech program with the same paper name but these paper scores the scores that you get in the papers are used for screening and subsequent processing for mtech or phd admissions so in that sense, GATE is a mandatory requirement for all the undergraduate uh, students. So any student with four-year undergraduate uh, program, remember, it is not applicable for three-year bachelor program. All students having four years of undergraduate uh, degree after 10 plus uh, 2 are eligible to apply for PG admissions in IITs if they have cleared the GATE examination. So, I assume many of you have uh, cleared GATE examination and some of you are aspirants who are uh, writing GATE exam, going to write GATE exam. So, let me congratulate all those who have qualified in this prestigious national level examination. So, once you have qualified in the examination, there is uh, no single window system or a single portal where you can make a single application and assume that you would be called by IITs for admission. Many a times I have seen students uh, having this myth that mere qualifying gate would automatically somehow the IITs would get the information and they would make admission offer to you or applying to one IIT or one at one place would automatically uh, make you visible to all the other IITs. That is not true. So, the next step after you have qualified GATE is to be aware of what are all the different programs where you are likely to be uh, admitted. So, this is a tedious exercise because apart from GATE qualification, many IITs have their own requirement which is called as minimum eligibility requirement or minimum eligibility qualification. So, these minimum eligibility qualifications range from 
the discipline of study. For example, some of the IITs may mention that they are looking for only BTEC in a particular discipline. Some of the IITs might make it open, saying that we are open to BTEC with any discipline or any uh, you know degree uh, name or discipline as we call them. So the first thing for a student after qualifying gate is to visit the websites of different places, different IITs, IIITs, etc. I will not talk about NITs and IIITs because uh, they have much more streamlined system for MTech admission at least. Now, uh, before I go into uh, the process, let me also uh, tell that when I say MTech, it is not just the MTech degree, but there are other postgraduate degrees like MS, MS by research, uh, then uh, MS by project mode, MTech by project mode, MTech in research mode. So there are various names given to the master's degree. So some of these master's degree are two year degree programs. Some of them are also three year degree programs. There is no one year degree program because one year master's degree is not considered equivalent to MTech. Uh, so if you find certain places, one year programs, they must be only, uh, they, they would be usually called as PG diploma degrees. So if you are looking for a professional degree like MTech or MS, uh, then it has to be a two year minimum two year program. It can also be three year uh, program. So what are the variations that exist as far as the MTech is concerned? So most of the MTech, two-year MTech programs are purely course-based. So usually the structure of the program would be one year of uh, rigorous coursework. Uh, there would be different credit requirements or different number of courses based on the institute. And there would be one year of uh, project or as we call it as thesis, okay, thesis requirement. So this is the typical structure of a two-year MTech program. Uh, when it comes to uh, MS programs, which is Master of Science, usually Master of Science is a program that is research oriented. So there would be lighter coursework requirement. So you, you would do like four, four courses or six courses, etc. Less than what typically MTech students would do, but spend more time in research oriented courses or research oriented uh, uh, projects etc so for example here people would supplement the uh, rest of the credits would with uh, uh, mini project or seminar courses or a thesis full fledged thesis that can be even three semester thesis work so apparently these ms programs are started by iits to nurture students for research or PhD program right after the BTEC program. So in the earlier days, people were actually not taking BTECs directly for PhD. So if you have done an MS degree, which is research oriented, then your aptitude for research is tested and you would be eligible for PhD or you would be better prepared for PhD after this. But nowadays, the relevance of MS is uh, uh, you know, veiny, weaning away because MS by research, which is having more research component or thesis component is not necessary because BTEC students can directly opt for a PhD program or a dual degree program, which is called as MTech plus PhD. I will talk about this dual degree at a later stage. So institutes like IIT Hyderabad are also offering MTech three year uh, in three year mode which is again primarily research oriented. So in such programs, they would have typically coursework for uh, one year and the remaining period would be spent on research either in funded projects or uh, in, in certain other uh, you know, methods. Okay. So these are uh, the names might look different, but the first thing is not just go by name. You should not simply look at MTech, MTech RA or MSR, etc but go to the respective website of the program and look at the detailed curriculum identify what is the number of courses that a student has to do and what is the duration for example is it one semester coursework or two semester coursework or three semester coursework some of the programs might have a slow paced program 
wherein the coursework would be spread across three semesters or four semesters along with some mini project or thesis component right from the second semester. So there are different flavors of the PG programs across IITs and there are no, there is no standardization because each IIT is an autonomous institute. So once you have looked at or scanned all the programs uh, and identified what is the program that is of interest to you, the next step would be to make an application for the program. Now here again, each IIT handles its own set of applications or applicants a different manner. There is no single window portal for making one application wherein all the IITs would use the application data for screening. The requirements of the application form might be different for different IITs. So go through the website carefully and identify what is the documents required, what is the eligibility mentioned there uh, for the program and accordingly make an application. You would have to make one application for each program. Some of the IITs might take a single application and consider you for multiple programs, but majority of the IITs would ask you to make a single uh, one application for every program that you are interested in application. So there is no automatic transfer of your application across programs or across departments. Okay? So the structure of IIT is in general that there is an academic affairs section and under the academic affairs section you would have different departments or schools or centers where the concerned programs would be running. You will have to identify the targeted program and make an application uh, through the admission portal of the IIT for each department or each program separately. Okay? So that is the first step that you will have to uh, do. Uh, once you have uh, made enough applications, so for example, if you are interested in applying to 10 different IITs, you will have to make uh, 10 different applications to each of these IITs. Uh, in recent times, from 2017 onwards, there is this initiative uh, by the GATE body, which is called as CBOAP. So CBOAP stands for Common Offer Acceptance Portal. The purpose of CBOAP is not to do a centralized counseling or centralized admission as it is done in your typical uh, you know state wise jwe or jwe advanced etc or even for that matter uh, the nit single portal uh, which is called as ccmt uh, okay so here the uh, the coap objective is only to avoid contentions across iits so before coap what used to happen is that uh, a single applicant or a single candidate is offered uh, from multiple IITs simultaneously and the candidate used to keep all the offers together till the last minute and ultimately select only one of them and uh, you know reject all the others leaving lot of vacant seats. So after COAP has started uh, the number of vacant seats has uh, uh, reduced significantly because now in COAP what happens is that after you have made application to let us say five different IITs or five different programs, uh, all the offers made by the different IITs are displayed to the candidate in a single portal. So for example, if you are selected from five different IITs for five or ten programs, all the offer letters are displayed in a portal in the COAP portal. The candidate is asked to uh, select one of the offers and reject the other offers. So COAP, of course, uh, there are multiple uh, phases or multiple stages. Uh, so some of the initial stages, uh, you would have the option to upgrade uh, across uh, different programs. After a certain number of phases or certain number of rounds are over, uh, you would have to freeze your option and decide which is the program that you want to join and reject all the other programs. Okay, so that is like typical, uh, you know, admission, central admission portals at any other place. But the main difference is that the admission is not done by COAP. It is not uh, done at a single place. Individual IITs would take decision on the suitability of the candidate for the respective programs. And some of the IITs might have a further process like written test or interview. Uh, majority of the uh, programs for circuit branches at least there may not be any interview. The admission is done purely based on GATE score subject to some basic percentage uh, criteria 
like there might be requirement of 60% or 70% uh, and uh, some basic uh, relevant disciplines. So for example, uh, B.Tech in civil engineering may not be uh, eligible for M.Tech in computer science in some IITs, but in some other IITs, uh, irrespective of the discipline, they might be admitted. So after the scrutiny is done, each IIT would make the offers and these offers are displayed in COAP where the candidate has to select which offer to keep and which offer to reject. So that is the only purpose of COAP. It is not a central counseling portal or a single uh, window admission portal. Okay. So in that sense, the overhead on the candidates is that the candidate has to literally search through all the 100 odd programs which are available across different IITs, identify which program uh, he would like, he or she would like to choose uh, and uh, there there is a trade-off also. So for example, you might want to uh, keep offer from multiple programs within an IIT, but that may not be possible after some number of rounds in the COIP. Ultimately, you would have to let go of uh, uh, all the offers except one offer. Okay. Uh, so go through the admission uh, websites or the brochure of each respective IIT very carefully to identify whether you are eligible. If there are any doubts, uh, it is better to write to directly the academic section or if there is a email ID or a contact point for the concerned department admission uh, section or the admission committee, then you can write to them. Otherwise, please write only to the academic affairs office not to, uh, you know, sometimes I find students writing to registrar, uh, you know, director, etc. and uh, wait for the reply, that will not happen. So identify the right contact person for any queries that you may have. Sometimes the wording of the eligibility criteria might be ambiguous to you. You may not be clearly understanding whether you are eligible or not. You get it clarified with the concerned academic section. Okay. So this is about the MTEC admission. Uh, when it comes to MS, uh, some of the uh, programs are purely research oriented, so they would have very minimal coursework, maybe just four courses or one semester of coursework and the remaining three semesters would be spent in mini projects or thesis work. Uh, but both MS and MTech are technically equivalent, although the placement opportunities for MS might be slightly lower than what is there for MTech because MTech is a standard degree uh, with rigorous coursework. So companies do tend to prefer MTech students compared to MS. MS is mainly, as I was mentioning from the beginning, it is for those who are interested in research, uh, who are inclined towards uh, research. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, both are two-year programs and both have equal kind of reputation in the uh, job market or in the outside world, in the academic community. Okay. So uh, this is about the two-year programs. Now I would also like to emphasize that uh, from quite some time now, uh, many IITs or I would say most of the IITs uh, definitely also take B.Tech students directly for PhD program. Okay, So why a student should do PhD? There are multiple reasons. PhD of course is an uh, advanced uh, uh, you know, course. It is not a course based program. Student get trained on uh, higher level thinking skills, higher order thinking skills. You get the ability to innovate, create, right, and uh, uh, solve challenging problems. Many of the PhD students these days are being hired by companies for their uh, ability to uh, do high level thinking on innovation, etc., uh, run startups, or uh, do advanced development in the companies. So. PhD uh, is also a very good option for undergraduate students. If an undergraduate student joins PhD directly, typically the student would be able to complete PhD in five years to six years of uh, study. Okay. Whereas if you go after MTech, again you will have to spend another five years. So in terms of the number of years taken, definitely it's an added advantage for BTech students to directly go for uh, PhD. Okay. Uh, and most of the IITs have now come up uh, in the light of NEP, have come up with the dual degree programs where the student gets admitted to uh, a program called as dual degree MTech PhD program. 
so at the end of 5 or 6 years of study the student graduates with both mtech degree as well as phd degree there is also an option to exit in case the student is not able to perform well or due to any other reasons uh, after 3 years or 4 years uh, sometimes the student is given an exit option but the exit option is rare so if you are joining for a direct dual degree program you cannot expect to come out with an mtech degree in just 2 years you will have to study at least for 3 years or sometimes it could be a little longer 3 and a half to 4 years uh, but there is an exit option which is introduced by majority of the iits now and in uh, some years back the student who is joining for direct phd program after btech used to get only phd degree uh, with no mtech degree some of the employment opportunities are missed out so this is now rectified by many of the iits would with a dual degree program uh, which gives you jointly both mtech as well as uh, phd degree okay so here i would like to emphasize that those students with uh, uh, from cftis if there are any students uh, who have btech degree from cftis and they have uh, a cgpa or cpa of more than 8 then they are eligible for direct admission into phd program without uh, qualifying in gate so gate is not necessary for uh, students with uh, btech degree from any cfti if they have a cpa of more than 8 so watch out for these special uh, advertisements or special recruitment drives now available from uh, most of the iits or iasc and uh, so uh, naturally you know you would get an advantage even without uh, gate you can join for a phd program okay and those btechs um, who uh, want to uh, explore the option of phd should again look at the uh, curriculum uh, as well as the brochure for the phd program separately as i mentioned mtech program and phd program or mtech program and dual degree mtech plus phd program are different programs so you have to make an application program wise you cannot apply for only phd or uh, a dual program with mtech plus phd and expect that your application would be automatically considered for mtech or vice versa so each program the application has to be made separately uh, for each institute okay the dual programs or specialized programs like ms ms by research etc are not handled by coap so again what is handled by coap is uh, decided by the concerned iit so an iit when joining coap would specify which are all the programs that would be part of the coap uh, and which are not part of it so be careful in looking out what are part of coap and what is not part of coap so if you are uh, applying to programs which come under the portal coap portal you also will have to do a separate registration in the coap portal so many times students miss the coap registration they only do the application in the concerned iits but miss out on the coap registration this would not be acceptable so if you have applied to mtex in iits you also will be uh, making another application in coap or a registration in coap and give the necessary details as to which programs you have applied in which iits etc in the coap portal okay so these are uh, you know some of the uh, broad things that i wanted to talk about so undergraduates uh, must consider uh, the uh, you know phd programs or dual mtech plus phd programs seriously lot of companies these days are uh, hiring phd uh, graduates uh, at very specialized and uh, you know uh, jobs with uh, very high package okay so for example in iits uh, most often those in the circuit branches the phd graduates are getting packages uh, averaging from uh, you know uh, 30 30 to 40 lakhs at least and this is not displayed in the placement uh, office websites across iits because post phd the placements are done uh, in a decentralized manner so the placement office usually does not uh, directly uh, connect the recruiters with the phd uh, degree holders instead after phd the students uh, look for job opportunities directly or through the contacts uh, with this of the supervisor or uh, the concerned heads of the departments and there are a lot of opportunities 
monetarily also i would like to emphasize that the phd scholarship given by ministry of education is uh, not bad it is you know as of today uh, 40000 per month without any tax uh, so much better than many of the small uh, low level jobs that uh, typically people are getting in the services sector and uh, apart from that uh, you also have lots of uh, specialized uh, phd fellowships given by various companies like intel qualcomm etc for particularly those in the circuit branches so if you are doing research in areas which are relevant for industry then there is no depth for fellowship there is also this very lucrative uh, prime minister research fellowship uh, which is uh, given by uh, ministry of education uh, when it started it used to be only for btex from ci cftis but now most of the pmrf uh, fellows are through the lateral entry that means once you take admission into an iit for a phd program you can make an application within the first six months to the pmrf program and if your basic cv is good that means if you have had consistently good percentages uh, at least you know 70 percent or 80 percent throughout your uh, academic career then there are high chances that the student gets selected for the pmrf if it is recommended from one of the iits so routinely we find that at least in circuit branches there are not enough applications even for the pmrf fellowship uh, scheme in the lateral mode so if you are a good bright student with a consistent academic track record and if you have joined the phd uh, in any of the iits or cftis then you are eligible for the pmrf uh, fellowship uh, and uh, there are very high chances that you get selected for the PMRF, uh, which is, you know, about uh, uh, 75,000 to 80,000 per month with lot of travel grant given, about 5 lakhs uh, travel grant is given for attending international conferences for contingency purposes, etc. Okay, so do consider a direct PhD program as well among the uh, list of higher education programs that you are uh, considering. Okay. So this is all about uh, the uh, education opportunities, higher education opportunities, at least in the IIT sector. Uh, the I NITs and the other CFTIs which come under uh, the other CCMT portal would be talked about by my colleague. Okay, I would uh, maybe stop here and uh, over to you, Dr. John. Thank you, sir. I'm Rekha here. Um, so, Dr. Venkatesh gave us a good uh, overview of how the admissions are done at IITs uh, with the GATE score and all. So, he gave the difference between the MTech and the MS and the dual degree branches also, uh, opportunities also. And the best opportunity, what I feel, is the direct PhD one with the scholarships from the PMRF. Uh, Fellowship, Prime Minister's Research Fellowships and all, uh, and the grants that are available for the PhD students, uh, that makes it a very uh, interesting one. So hope the, all the students and the faculty over here are benefited by this. All the queries will be dealt uh, during the Q&A session. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So now uh, I invite Dr. John Jones to introduce the uh, next speaker, Dr. Samir of NIT Calicut. Okay, so it's my privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Samir Assam. Uh, Dr. Assam Samir received his B.Tech degree from University of Kerala, M.Tech and Ph.D. from Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur. After various tenure in industries, he joined as a lecturer in the Department of Electronics and Communication at National Institute of Technology, Calicut in 1998 and where he is presently working as the professor. He has published over 80 so research papers in reputed IEEE transactions and premier conferences. He has received many best paper awards in reputed Indian conferences. He is a very active and visible face of IEEE, not only at the India Council level, but also at the IEEE Region 10 level as well. He has served on technical program committees at several international conferences, especially in organizing mega IEEE programs. He was the general co-chair of uh, the IEEE Region 10 flagship conference, TENCON, which was held in 2019. 
and then he was the general chair of indicon 2022 he also served as the chair of ieee kerala section during 2018-19 treasurer of ieee india council 2017-18 and also served as the secretary of ieee region 10 during 21-22 he is the recipient of outstanding all india award of ieee region 10 in 2020 He is currently serving as the chair of IEEE Region 10 Conference Quality and Management Committee, NGA as a representative to IEEE Global Conference Committee, and member of Technical Program Integrity Committee of IEEE Conference Quality Committee. With his vast experience as Dean of Academic Courses of National Institute of Technology, Calicut, he has coordinated the admission process and also played an important role in coordinating the CCMT activities. It's our privilege to have Dr. S. M. Samir with us. without much delay let me invite dr sm samir to speak about the nit admissions program over to you dr samir so uh, you had a very good uh, introduction uh, to the program with opportunities available in iits uh, indian institute of science and other premier institutions uh, uh, of the country from dr uh, bengadesh uh he has highlighted the uh, very important uh, aspect of the admission process in iits uh which is uh, a decentralized admission process uh where you have to put up application for uh, all the different institutions which you want to apply uh, separate applications and uh, uh, there is a coordination coordination portal there also you have to register but uh, 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 it it is very important that you need to uh, 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 find out the courses that are of interest to you and the institutions that are of interest to you and apply to all the programs separately whereas uh, the higher education admission for mtech uh, admission especially in iits uh, uh, nits uh, triple its and many of the triple its not all triple its Uh, some of the triple its and all nits uh, and uh, possibly this year the indian institute of space uh, technology as well all happen uh, through a single portal so that is the advantage so uh, of the admission process in uh, these uh, tier of institutions yeah so uh Uh, i mean I, my my presentation is uh, kind of uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, stacked with lot of information so probably this is a very important uh, exercise that uh, almost all the uh, candidates will be going through so i thought i'll give all the step by step process in detail so uh, so if you look at the uh, uh, centralized counseling for mtech Uh, m mark m plan admissions in uh, uh, in these kind of institutions that is all nits some of the triple its and some of the centrally funded other institutions uh, iisc etc so all these things happen through a portal called the ccmt uh, ccmn process and uh, ccmt stands for the admission for all these uh, engineering and architecture planning programs ccm uh, n stands for the admission process for the msc programs in nits and these institutions so uh, the uh, detailed list of institutions are going to participate in every years admission process uh, will be available from the website of the coordinating institute for the ccmt admission process so every year uh, one of the centrally funded institute will be coordinating uh these admission process and uh, in 2024 the admission process is most likely it will be coordinated by either nit delhi or sb nit surat uh, i am not uh, having a full clarity on which of these two institutions will be finally uh, i mean doing the coordination because some documents say it is nit delhi and some say it is sb nit surat so uh, you will get clarity in, in 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 the coming weeks basically so what is the ccmt uh, ccmt provides a centralized platform uh, for online counseling where candidates can fill a single online application form and apply to all the programs in all the participating institutions to which they are eligible so here the process is much more simpler probably as compared to 
the uh, applications, individual applications to be put up for uh, uh, IITs and IAC. And uh, uh, there are multiple rounds for this uh, counseling process. There are uh, regular rounds and special rounds and uh, uh, there will be opportunity to, to, to uh, I mean, leave the seats that you have got in one round and go to another round and so on, which I'll explain. So, so what are the features? Uh, what are the features of this admission process? So there will be generally three rounds of admissions, which are called the regular rounds, uh, followed by two special rounds, and there will be, I mean, most likely there will be national sport round. So I'm giving all this information based on the admission process that we had till 2023. Some changes may be introduced in 2024. I'm taking a disclaimer here because uh, the Coordinating Institute may be coming up with some modifications, some changes every time. But uh, over the last uh, uh, few years, we can see that there are three regular rounds and two special rounds as well as a national sport round. And uh, uh, this portal also facilitates, the CCMT portal also facilitates online document verification of all the rounds. And uh, this document verification will be done by the institute where the candidate is uh, allotted with the admission. And uh, in that uh, portal itself, there is a provision for online query uh, redressal system. So during document verification, the uh, uh, I mean the the portal the the queries will be raised to the candidates, and candidates also will be able to raise some queries to the institute where the admission is offered. And uh, there is a kind of uh, option will be available after every uh, round. Uh, if you are allotted a seat, you will have an option to surrender the seat and participate in the next round. Uh, and this will be enabled uh, uh, in the special round of admissions. And, and there will be uh, three different kind of options available for the candidates after every round of allotment, which are called as float, flight, and freeze. So I'll explain these terms in the coming slide. Now, uh, so what is the first step? The first step is the every potential candidate who seek admission to these type of uh, the uh, list of institutions, that is all the NITs, IIITs, and uh, IASC most likely will be joining this year. And some of the, uh, I mean, centrally funded institutions, they have to register in the portal by paying a non-refundable fee uh, to participate in CCMT 2024 process for the regular rounds of one, two, and three. And if you are participating later in the special round, you will have to pay additional registration and additional payment of fee. Now, uh, once you are participating and uh, your registration, everything is through, and uh, in the first round, for example, if you are allotted a seat, then uh, you have to pay seat acceptance fee. This is to be deposited by a candidate when he or she accepts a seat allotted to uh, him or her. So this is a part of the institute fee and will be later adjusted uh, against the finally allotted institution's uh, admission fee. So if you are allotted a seat, then it is a, it is a mandatory requirement that you have to pay the CX seat acceptance fee to secure your seat uh, for the further processing. And there is something called partial admission fee. Once you finally, when you accept the CA, when you pay the seat acceptance fee uh, and uh, continue with the counseling process, you may not join in the institute where the of admission is offered in the first round. Because if you are having higher options in the second round, third round, the institutions may change. But you have to pay the CEX seat acceptance fee in the first instant itself for you to be considered in the future processes. And once you finalize your admission in a particular institute, that is, you freeze your admission, then the portal will ask you to pay the partial admission fee, which is to be deposited by all the candidates in the CCMG portal at the time of online institute reporting, if the student uh, wants to confirm his or her seat. Again, this will be part of the institute fee and it will be adjusted against the finally allotted institute's uh, admission fee. Okay, so all these fee, both uh, uh, seat acceptance fee and partial fee, both will be adjusted against the institute fee later. 
Now, the portal will be uh, making all the institutions, participating institutions, their specializations, etc., available for the candidate to register. But there will be some special eligibility criteria. Professor Venkatesh also was mentioning that in different IITs, some special eligibility criteria may be there for some courses. So similarly, in this system also, candidates are required to check the special eligibility criteria, if any, prescribed by the participating institutes, apart from the details available in the CCMT website. So therefore, the candidates have to look at the information brochure of the CCMT, which will give you some idea uh, on some of the special eligibility requirements for which we have to further get the information from the respective admission portal of that institute. So what are the general eligibility requirements for CCMT 2024? A candidate for the MTech, MPlan or MMARC uh, uh, admission program must have a valid GATE score obtained in the year 2022 or 23 or 24. And in the qualifying degree, the candidate should have passed and secured at least 6.5 CGPA on a 10 point scale or 50 percentage of marks for the open candidate or open uh, EWS, OBC, etc. Whereas 6 CGPA or 55 percentage in the case of SCST and uh, uh, people with disability uh, disabilities. So uh, again, you have to be very careful because only the primary mode of evaluation of the university or institute will be as mentioned in the qualifying degree or mark sheet will be considered while verifying the eligibility. That is, if the primary mode is CGPA, then the percentage will not be looked at. If the primary mode is only, only percentage, then only uh, the percentage will be looked at. And this is always a, a matter of concern because students with borderline CGPS borderline percentages will be coming and uh, uh, I mean asking lots of doubts later. So uh, you have to be very careful that in case both CGPA and percentage of mark are mentioned by a university, only CGPA will be considered for the uh, uh, I mean uh, admission process. And again, it is very important to note that the conversion formula from CGPA to percentage or vice versa given by the individual institute or university will not be allowed by CCMT. Only the CCMT rule will be applicable for all the institutions across the country. That is 6.5 CGPA or 60 percentage of mark, whichever is the primary mode of, uh, I mean, uh, evaluations for the general EWS and OBC candidates. Now, uh, institutions, will offer admission to gate qualified candidates even if they have not cleared their final qualifying degree. A provisional admission is permitted to a candidate subject to meeting the minimum qualifying degree requirements, that is the uh, discipline requirements, etc. Latest uh, at a deadline given by CCMT. So generally the deadline given will be September 30th. So by 30th of September, the candidate should be uh, should be able to produce the degree certificate, provisional degree certificate to the admission admitted institute. Say uh, such candidates who uh, whose final degrees are not available, a certificate from the head of the current institute in a format given in CCMT website. You can look at the uh, all the application formats will be given in the CCMT website. So uh, just look at. Uh, CCMT, if you can go to the old website also, like CCMT 2022 website, if you look at all the certificate templates are available even now. Okay, so uh, you can even now, you can, though 2024 site is not ready, you can now itself go to CCMT 2022 or 2023 websites and then collect the templates of all these certificate formats. And uh, uh, you can prepare and make all these certificate ready so that you'll be able to upload them on time. Now for each program, uh, eligibility is defined based on uh, certain combinations of degree, disciplines and the gate paper. And uh, you have to refer to the CCMT website for the seat matrix and the eligibility matrix, which provides the number of seats available under different categories 
in each program. So in one program, sometimes uh, some seats will be reserved to students from certain gate discipline. Certain number of seats will be reserved for students from another gate discipline and so on. So you, you have to look at all those uh, details. Now, uh, for certain programs uh, in a few participating institutions, special eligibility criteria are, uh, are applied. So I have mentioned it earlier. Uh, and uh, these eligibility requirements shall not be checked during the registration process in the CCMG, but it will be verified during the online document verification stage, as well as during the physical reporting at the final allotted institutions. So therefore, it is the candidate's responsibility to ensure that they fulfill all such special requirements before switching, choosing such programs during the choice building. So this is often again a very important step which students may ignore, but finally they may run into difficulties. So you have to be very careful with certain institutions and specializations. And CCMT always say that it will be the sole responsibility of the candidate uh, for the data that they are submitting to the portal and CCMT will not entertain any claims arising out of their failure to comply with special eligibility criteria at a later stage. Now, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, gate qualified candidates uh, who have not completed their BTEC or BR in the regular universities, but through their professional societies, such as the Institution of Engineers, Institute of Civil Engineers, Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers, and so on and so forth. And uh, please note that. Uh, some institutions in the country will accept candidates who have completed their uh, B, uh, undergraduate degree through these professional societies, provided uh, you have enrolled for such programs before 31st May 2013. And only if you have enrolled before this cutoff date, your degree will be considered as valid for admission to CCMT portal and uh, just because you have completed this again you may not be able to apply to all the institutions some institutions may not accept candidates with uh, these kind of degrees but so you have to look at the eligibility requirements of the respective institutions before applying now uh, the process of checking special eligibility conditions uh, the institute will be checking their own special eligibility con for candidates allotted to them during the verification process. So the candidates would be required to be very careful while filling the online choices and they may take if needed the help through online help centers of that particular institute. So through the online help center, online help centers will be available to most of the institutions. If you are having any doubts regarding any eligibility criteria, uh, you have to contact the help desk of that institute and uh, uh, I mean, make sure that you meet the requirements before you fill the choice in the CCMT portal. Now, suppose you have, uh, I mean, uh, allotted a seat in the, uh, in one of the regular rounds or a special round in the uh, counseling process. So first step is once you're allotted, you have to pay the partial seat acceptance fee. And uh, uh, then next step is uh, you have to proceed to the document verification as per the stipulated time period. A time period will be stipulated by the uh, CCMT uh, for uploading all the certificates and other documents required for online verification. And uh, uh, an officer in the allotted institute will be verifying these documents or by online means, and they may raise queries to the candidates. Again, the candidates have to respond to these queries within a very short stipulated time period. And uh, multiple rounds of these interactions will go through between the verifying officer and the candidate before the document verification is successfully completed. So the candidate has to be very careful and patient and time bound checking is checking in the portal will be required to complete the document verification process. So uh, the candidates will be compulsorily required to submit the clarifications and uh, 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 on the documents in response to the queries raised by the document verifying officer of the allotted institute in the stipulated time period, failing which the, uh, uh, it will be treated that the candidate is not uh, reported 
and hence the seat allotted to him or her will be cancelled and will not be considered for the seat allotment in the subsequent rounds. So in the first round, even if you are not landed on your dream institute and dream branch, you have to uh, proceed with the document verification uh, for you to be considered live in the process for the later rounds of admissions. Now, in case the seat is cancelled in regular rounds, the candidates may participate in special rounds if he or she fulfills the eligibility requirements at that day. That is because the candidate has not reported for a uh, document verification at the appropriate time and the seat gets cancelled, then the, in the special round, candidate can again apply and again participate in the counseling process, but not in the regular rounds. Now, what are the list of documents to be uploaded? for the online document verification. So the candidates are required to upload the colored scan copy of the following documents. So keep all these documents ready with you now itself if you are planning to participate in the CCMT process. And the templates of all these certificates, again I'm mentioning, are already available in the old CCMT, uh, CCMT 2022 or 2023 sites. Document for proof of date of birth, a 10 certificate or birth certificate or by a similar document, photo ID proof, mark sheet of class 12, grade and mark sheets of all qualifying examination of all semesters, degree or provisional degree certificate. If the result of qualifying degree is awaited, then the certificate of course completion from the institute last studied must be provided in the prescribed format. Gate scorecard of 2022, 23 or 24. Certificate of category. Now, this is again very important. If you belong to one of these categories, SCST, OBC, NCL, EWS, uh, as per the Government of India format requirements available in CCMT website, uh, the certificates are to be uh, are to be submitted as uh, uh, certificates issued by competent authority has to be submitted. Uh, in the case of OBC, NCL, and EWS. The certificate must be issued on or after 1st April 2024. This is very, very, very important. A certificate issued before uh, uh, 1st April 2024 uh, will not be considered by the institutions for OBC, NCL and EWS category students. Original certificate for person with disabilities, if applicable, issued by the competent authority would be required. Now, if the original certificates are not in English or Hindi, English or Hindi version or translation of such certificates duly certified by the principal or director or other competent authority of the graduating institute will be required during the verification of documents. Now, uh, another uh, uh, very important uh, steps. Now, uh, in important options to be taken after getting an allotment. Now, on allotment of a seat and payment of a seat acceptance fee, the candidates are required to exercise one of the following uh, billingness options online through their login. It could be float, slide, or freeze. Float is if you if you are allotted a seat, but if you wish to be considered in the next round. For all of your better preferred choices across all the institutions, then opt for the float option. That is, all the uh, choices above the choice that you have uh, obtained now will be considered for the future rounds. Slide. If you wish to be considered in the next round for your better preferred choice, only within the institute allotted to you. For example, I work at NIT Calicut. So, uh, if you are allotted admission to NIT Calicut, if you are a BTEC student in electronics and communication, you, uh, uh, NIT Calicut has got say, four specializations for BTEC ECE students. If you are allotted one of them, and if you are having two more upper choices uh, at NIT Calicut, you will be considered for these two choices alone if you apply to uh, apply the uh, exercise the slide option. That is, the institution is locked. But the branch will be considered uh, above the branch that are uh, given in the choice list uh, from, the, from the allotted seat. Freeze, 
if you are satisfied with the currently allotted seat and not in and the institute and not interested in your better preferred choices in the subsequent rounds then you exercise the freeze option so freeze means it is locked institute and branch slide means institute is locked but branch is not locked slot means both institute and branch are unlocked it will be considered as slotting for the remaining rounds now surrender and participate in the next rounds so first of all you should not fill in choices for such courses that you are not interested in uh, but if you are uh, if you, if, you, if you do not accept a seat that you have been allotted by paying seat acceptance fee you will be out of the seat allotment process of all regular rounds that is uh, if you are allotted a seat you are not happy with that if you are not paying the seat acceptance fee then you will be out of the process however after the successful online document verification and after paying the seat acceptance fee if the candidate wishes to surrender the currently allotted seat at this stage but wishes to participate in the subsequent rounds the candidate can select his or her willingness as surrender and participate which means the candidate rejects the offered seat in the current round and wishes to participate in the next round but please note that there is no guarantee that you will be getting admission in a desired branch in the next round and if you are having if you are not getting any branch in the next round you will have no claim on the seat allotted in the current round after surrendering it so exercise this option very carefully now special rounds i told you that there are three regular rounds the special round is in case you haven't received any seats in the regular rounds or you wish to upgrade your allotted seat by participating in the counseling process again you can apply to participate in two special rounds again fresh registration by paying the fee and fee uh, is required for the same and the options given earlier can be exercised for this round also and again please note that candidate admitted to the finally allotted institute and not withdrawn the admission will retain their seat if a new seat is not allotted in the special round that is i am allotted a new seat in the regular round i joined i completed all the formalities but i can participate in the special round for a better op op option um, and if, the danger is that uh, if a new seat is allotted in the special round the earlier allotted seat will be cancelled you have to join in the new seats new institute new branch new national sport round so this is typically the last round in the admission process in order to fill the vacant seat after the regular and special rounds a national sport round will be done centrally again a fresh application and fee payment will be required to participate in this round and all the processes rules and eligibility criteria would be would remain the same as in the case of regular uh, and special rounds so the candidates who are already having a seat in the regular round can retain their seat if a new seat is not allotted in the special round or national sport round but if a new seat is allotted then the earlier allotment will be cancelled now you have been allotted a seats and uh, you have completed all the online processes then the last step is reporting and document verification at the allotted institute now on allotment of a seat in any other any rounds the candidate is required to report physically to the allotted institute and this will be after the national sport round or as per the schedule and instruction of the allotted institute so you have to visit the website of the allotted institute the admission website and look for the detailed the instruction regarding the physical reporting dates time etc and for subsequent process of offline document verification by the allotted institute so this is generally a uh, one week or 10 days before the starting of classes basically all institute instructions related to document verification will be given by the allotted institute so therefore the candidates have to visit the website of the allotted institute and uh, uh, check all the details if the candidate fails to report and his or her document verified on the scheduled uh, stipulated time period the candidate will lose any claim on the allotted seat and this is applicable to candidates who get a seat in the national uh, sport round also now this is the ccmt 2023 website and uh, if you just go there you will be able to see 
uh, frequently ask help desk and uh, frequently ask question the details so you can uh, clarify some of your queries there so, so this is a snapshot of the website similarly 2024 ccmt will also uh, issue these kind of uh, facts basically but you can look at these to get uh, some of your doubts clarified uh, uh, even before the opening of this now as i told you uh, i mean admission to all the nits will happen through ccmt uh, portal uh, some of the triple its some of the centrally funded institutions will also happen uh, and the, this year, uh, uh, there is a special institute in the Institute of Space Science and Technology at Trivandrum. It's an institute, uh, uh, I mean, working closely with uh, the Indian Space Research Organization. Uh, and uh, their admission process will also be likely through CCMT, CCMN process. Uh, you can look at their website to know the uh, details of the branches. There are some specialized branches there. Uh, and, uh, 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 and you can uh, look at the details available in this slide uh, to get more information on the opportunities available uh, in, in, in these sites, in their website. And uh, uh, Professor Venkatesh has already given the details of the direct admission to PhD program, uh, but I would like to again emphasize that uh, uh, this is a very good program for candidates interested to pursue a career in research laboratories or R&D companies and academia as a faculty member. So they all can uh, now join for a direct PhD program in IACs, IITs, NITs, IIITs, etc. Many of those, most of these institutions offer direct PhD admissions. And uh, it's a very attractive scheme. Uh, Professor has already mentioned uh, in multiple ways, reduced completion time than the traditional MTech PhD route which will take another uh, maybe typically seven years plus, whereas you can complete a PhD in five to six years, typically through a direct PhD route. High stipend, the MTech uh, students admitted through GATE will be getting a stipend of rupees 12,400 rupees, 12, rupees per month, whereas uh, PhD candidates will be getting stipend in the range of 35,000 to 40,000 a minimum, depending on the institutions and with additional fellowships, uh, PMRF and all higher fellowships are possible. And this is considered as equivalent to usual MTech PhD degree. And uh, only thing is, a uh, higher CGPA requirement may be prescribed by the institutions, like uh, uh, for the MTech admission uh, for the general candidates, only 6.5 is required, for, uh, whereas for direct PhD, sometimes 7.5 or 8 or 8.5, depending on the institution's uh, uh, a higher CGPA requirement may be uh, prescribed. Uh, but again, you have to be very careful Admission to direct PhD program is not through CCMG. Uh, candidates interested to apply for a PhD uh, have to apply to the individual institutions, as Professor Bengadesh mentioned, in response to the application for the PhD program. So now the uh, for the July admissions, the PhD uh, application for PhD process is uh, live in many institutions. You can apply now itself. Uh, if you are having a, uh, a plan to join for a PhD program uh, uh, directly after your undergraduate program. Okay. So that's all. And uh, uh, best wishes to all of you who are aspiring to join in one of the allied institutions in the country. And thanks for your listening. Thank you so much, sir, for that detailed, uh, uh, to the minute details of how the admissions are to be done. And uh, many of the participants are looking for your PPT also. That was really beneficial for us. Um, so uh, now uh, I, I guess uh, we can move on to the Q&A session. Uh, so I request uh, Dr. Varun to share the questions. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much. We have so many questions. So I would directly go first. Uh, probably I would uh, start with Venkatesh, sir. Uh, some questions uh, in the chat box uh, by the participants. Uh, before that, thank you, Swami sir and Vingri sir for this uh, comprehensive uh, information regarding gate uh, process, the ap application process. So first question uh, to Vingri sir, uh, what is the average CGPA required in BTEC for MTEC admission in IITs and IASCs? So it is usually uh, 6.5 CGPA or 60%. Uh, so some IITs might have some difference here and there, but usually first class 
uh, for the general candidates so that is 60 percent and uh, five percent relaxation is given to category candidates okay uh, thank you sir and there is a uh, question that is does uh, i think it's a continuation question does btech uh, uh, gpa cgpa matters for getting a good admission uh, uh, admission into iits yes indeed so uh, most of the iits uh, actually for uh, the mtech admissions are usually based directly only on gate score say so though they do not again use any other uh, you know composite score which includes the percentage criteria so once you are above 60% then uh, irrespective of your actual percentage uh, the mtech admission happens only based on gate score so the merit list would be prepared based on gate score however specialized programs like master of science or mtech research or phd uh, the shortlisting might include uh, the cgpa also uh, with certain weightage so in which case uh, higher the percentage better would be the chances of getting admission or getting through the interview process and further process and a good percentage will make a lot of impact in subsequent applications for fellowship, et cetera, like PMRF, Intel fellowship, all of them would look at the uh, CGPA criteria. So it's always good to have a good academic uh, and consistent academic record uh, throughout the academic career. Thank you. I think that's a very uh, uh, clear answer to the question. And the next question is, uh, how many solid months are required for gate preparation? Uh, that I don't have a uh, immediate answer. Uh, it depends on how good you are with the undergraduate uh, subjects. Uh, but usually, uh, from my experience with interacting with students, I uh, realize that if you start early on, from second year onwards, some of the subjects, uh, then by the time you are in third year, many of the students make uh, you know good attempt at gate and they manage to qualify. So I think along with uh, continuous education, maybe, you know, five, six months of rigorous practice should be good enough. So, sir, is it uh, ideal uh, to start from second year? Of yes, yes. So as and when your subjects are relevant to GATE are uh, getting covered, so you should also consider practicing problems and solving problems from GATE uh, old papers and focus on problem solving skills and uh, deeper higher order thinking skills rather than only, you know, memorizing. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is for applying PhD directly after BTEC, IIT Guwahati requires work experience, publication details, referee details. So how shall I apply directly for PhD after BTEC in IIT Guwahati? It's a specific question on IIT Guwahati. Uh, no. So uh, there are multiple categories for PhD. So you should be careful about what is the category you are considering. So these categories would come with names like sponsored, uh, then part time, etc. So for regular PhD uh, uh, program, I mean for uh, PhD under regular mode, which wherein the student gets a uh, five year of fellowship from Ministry of Education, the work experience is not required. So if there is such a field, you can skip it or uh, say not relevant. Uh, but for part time or sponsored uh, candidates, minimum two years of work experience is uh, required. So there you would also require no objection certificate, etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So the next question is, can the students of ECE who apply for CSE gate exam uh, apply for MTech in CSE field after score passing? Yes, yes, possible. Uh, so usually the advertisement would say BTEC in relevant discipline. Okay, so when it comes to eligibility criteria, we would uh, have a clause that says BTEC in relevant discipline followed by gate in particular paper. For example, for computer science, we would say gate in CS paper and BTEC in any relevant discipline. The relevant discipline is just to protect uh, from, uh, you know, certain degrees. So, for example, if it is completely irrelevant, like uh, maybe, you know, mechanical, civil or something, some IITs may not uh, be willing to take. But however, usually the MTech admission does not uh, consider the discipline. So, irrespective of whatever is the discipline, the MTech admission is direct because it is purely based on gate score. So often we do not uh, reject applications uh, of BTEC from other background. So if you have a good GATE score in CS, you are eligible for CS. Likewise, for ECE, etc. Watch out for what paper you need to give for a particular MTech program. And accordingly, you can apply. Uh, rele relevant to this, I can also answer this uh, DA. So a lot of students are asking on scope of GATE uh, DA, the new paper that is introduced. So this is a new paper that is introduced 
there are already couple of programs in iits uh, where uh, the the mtech is in artificial intelligence or mtech in data science or mtech in uh, robotics and artificial intelligence so for example iit guwahati has robotics and artificial intelligence mtech and uh, data science uh, so these would be considering the new paper iit hyderabad has a dedicated department of artificial intelligence where they have an mtech program uh, there they are considering already this uh, new paper da paper so one thing that students should remember is that the paper name uh, does not uh, have to match with the program name so don't search for mtech in data science and artificial intelligence directly we will have mtech with different names it may be robotics and ai it may be ai it may be data science it may be something else okay so the name of your paper doesn't have to match with the name of the mtech program so search exhaustively what are the different mtech programs that are available that information usually would be available in the academic affairs website so if you go to academics and go to programs you would find list of mtech programs run in a particular institute so go to the respective program and see what paper is required for that particular mtech program uh, thank you sir uh, so next question is like uh, do iits give placement to phd or postdoc students so placement uh, for phds and postdocs is mostly offline uh, some of the placement offices uh, do uh, have uh, registration for phd students if they are graduating around the placement season because phd the completion time is not synchronized with the uh, you know btech uh, completion time so phd students can graduate at any point of time during the year so because of that the placements are not synchronized but placement offices do help phd students in uh, securing placements okay yeah thank you sir that uh, we are, i think we have a couple of questions to venkatesh sir then then we will move to samir sir can a triple e student pursue masters or phd program in signal processing domain at iits provided electrical gate is clear uh, again that depends on uh, the what is the program and what are their requirements some departments which have uh, a triple a name triple which is electronics and electrical engineering they offer mtex uh, which consider both ee as well as ece paper whereas certain departments uh, may consider only ece paper so it all depends on uh, the individual requirements of different iits so there is no standard uh, rule okay so as as i uh, you know want to emphasize again your gate paper name does not have to match with the mtech program name okay don't look for an exact match between the gate paper name and uh, the mtech name sir one last question to you sir yeah for nits uh, we can know the gate cut off through ccmt is there something uh, similar to iits uh, the cut off required oh, okay so usually iits uh, would publish uh, the information on the academic affairs website after all the rounds are complete they would publish the opening and closing ranks if it is not available you can write to the uh, you know concerned iit and ask them for what are the typical uh, closing and opening ranks as uh, you know for the previous year or something like that because here what happens is that we have uh, different modes of admission like as professor samir was mentioning uh, there is no central spot round that is done by all iits after the admission process is over so individual iits would again be filling seats through spot round which the data of which is not recorded uh, in a central portal or a website so as a result you might not exactly know what is the closing rank of the previous year but if you write to the concerned academic affairs officers they would be uh, replying to you with what is the rough closing rank uh, for a particular program uh, thank you venkatesh sir for the all the very clear and crisp answers um, uh, yeah. So I would also to... like to answer just another uh, question, which some of them asked uh, MCA regarding MCA or MSc. MCA and MSCs are treated on par with BTEC because if you are doing an MCA or an MSc after a three-year undergraduate program, it is not treated as a postgraduate program. But uh, the situation is changing, so most of the institutes are now migrating to four-year BSc or four-year BS program. After which, if you complete a two-year master program. then it is uh, considered as a regular master program or an mtech so as of today mscs and mcas will have to write gate uh, for securing an admission into mtech program 
and they are also eligible for direct phd entry because they are treated on par with btech students uh, sir there is actually a question connecting you to your uh, regarding mca that is uh, is mca from nit eligible for pmrf do, uh, while doing uh, phd's from iits yes yes so bo both btech as well as mca from a cfti are treated uh, in a similar manner okay thank you very much sir now i would uh, um, ask uh, the uh, direct the question to samir sir okay yeah thank you uh, sir the first question uh, posted here is is the phd without gate option available if you graduate from an nit with 8 plus uh, cgp yes uh, now many nits uh, are not insisting for a gate score for phd admission now uh, for example in nit calicut uh, we don't insist for a gate score but uh, uh, we uh, ask the student to apply uh, and clear the departmental admission test basically so uh, this may be the case with many institutions some institutions uh, will prescribe requirement of gate but uh, you can look at the phd admission brochure of uh, the respective institutions where you are planning to apply to see whether uh, they are insisting for a gate or not so there are many institutions which are not insisting for a gate score now. yeah thank you sir um, there is one more question. What about doing MTech after MSc in electronics and communication? Is it possible to do MTech in IITs with GATE? Yes. After, after yeah. MSc in electronics and communication. Yeah, yes. After MSc, as Professor Bangladesh was mentioning, it is uh, considered as a uh, kind of a PG degree. But again, uh, many institutions in the country permit uh, students with MSc background also to join for MTech program. Uh, so, uh, again, if, if any special eligibility conditions are prescribed for a program, uh, the candidates have to satisfy. But otherwise, uh, most of the institutions uh, uh, in the country accept uh, 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 students with MSc background uh, to join for MTech. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think this is a very quite an interesting question, sir. Uh, will being an active IEEE member, volunteer and organizing various conferences, industry forums and national summits, along with research publication, add credit to the application, even if you have a low uh, GATE score, but have qualified GATE. For admission to MTech? or yeah, MTech in uh, I, uh, IITs and NITs. Yeah, but again, so uh, uh, IITs, uh, perhaps I'm not very sure, but uh, their admission process is, uh, 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 I mean, considering multiple parameters together. So. Apart from GATE score, they consider weightage for other academic credentials and other uh, credentials also. So probably it may be considered. But regarding the NIT admission process for MTech, NITs and PIPLITs, uh, most of the PIPLITs uh, participating in CCMG, uh, uh, the allotment is purely based on GATE scores. So therefore, uh, uh, you are as long as you satisfy the minimum uh, uh, CGP requirement of 6.5 or 6 or whatever the case may be, then uh, the rest of the allotment will be purely dependent on the gate score. So if uh, no other uh, credentials will be considered along with the gate score basically. But if you are applying for a uh, PhD program, uh, then uh, depending on the admission process, uh, a subject evaluation for your credentials, uh, publications or patents or other activities will be considered by TH generally when uh, your, uh, the applicants are shortlisted for PhD. I think that question might have been posted by some of our right triple student volunteers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, to be very clear for PhD admission, I think the additional uh, experience gathered. Yeah, everything uh, will be considered. generally counted, generally counted. Yes. Okay, thank you. So next uh, question is, what are the opportunities after MTech in IAST, Indian Institute of Science Technology? Uh, see, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, uh, uh, Space Technology basically, is a very specialized institute focusing on uh, uh, technologies uh, mostly related to the domain of interest of ISRO, like avionics, uh, uh, earth sciences, uh, mechanical engineering, and uh, uh, aerospace engineering related subjects. So, uh, of course, once you complete the MTech program, you will have opportunity uh, to apply when uh, in, in ISRO, DRDO, uh, and such kind of research labs in the country. And uh, you will have option to join for PhD programs in these areas, after which also you have tremendous opportunities. And they have a placement cell uh, in IAST who also, uh, I mean, uh, explore opportunities for these students from the other generic companies uh, 
in various domains basically so you can consider uh, in a way similar to nits uh, there is dedicated placement cell and they will also help you get placed in a uh, in, in, in wider domains okay thank you very much sir sir one question is, does ccmt publish closing ranks after every rounds yes they publish yeah okay yeah thank you and uh, uh, one question is, is any NIT introducing data science and artificial intelligence uh, in MTech and MS course this year or maybe previous? Uh, yeah, so, many institutions are starting. So at NIT Calicut, we have started an MTech program uh, in uh, data science and artificial intelligence, but uh, that is not a program uh, with fellowship, basically. That's a self-sponsored program uh, where the candidates will not be getting a fellowship. Uh, they Admission process is not through CCMT, CCM. So, yeah, so this is something which I wanted to mention actually. Uh, uh, that uh, in many in NITs in the country, and uh, there is a, a category of seats uh, called uh, self supported seats or self sponsored seats in almost all the branches. And NIT Calicut, uh, for all the MTech branches, we have five seats. And uh, for BR, M, M mark, we have M plan, we have 10 seats available. And for which a gate score is not mandatory. Uh, but if you are having a gate score, it's an advantage. Uh, uh, and uh, this admission to these seats will be uh, uh, through the institute admission process. And uh, it is not through CCMG, CCMN. You can look at the uh, website of the institute for the call for application for these seats. And uh, some of the new programs are not funded by Ministry of Education. Uh, uh, and uh, for example, this MTech program in artificial intelligence and data science has got 20 seats or 25 seats, 20 seats, I think. And all 20 seats are through self-sponsored scheme. So for which the admission will be done by the institute directly. It will not be available through CCMT website. Similarly, in other NITs also, there are uh, 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 I mean, seats like this, and uh, for which uh, you have to look at the respective uh, institute website and apply separately. So it's a, a chance for students with a slightly lesser gate score to study the branches which they are looking for. Uh, otherwise, I mean, the uh, I mean, aspiring branches. Uh, uh, only thing is, fellowship will not be available, and fees may be slightly higher than that of the normal students. Uh, sir, what to write? Uh, one question is, what uh, what to write in one page write up on the proposed research work uh, for applying for the PhD admission? So maybe slightly deviated from the top topic. Yeah, but that that's fine. I mean, so uh, it is basically related to the, your aspiration for the research. Uh, if you have already uh, done a good BTEC project, and uh, if you want to uh, highlight the research contribution that you have made in the research uh, BTEC research project, uh, you can highlight that. If you have already identified uh, some area in which you want to pursue, uh, you can highlight the uh, the plan basically. So uh, this is not a very serious, uh, I mean, uh, affair in the sense. Uh, uh, even if uh, your proposal is weak, but if other credentials are good, you are likely to get admissions. So this is just to show that you have a research potential, uh, and you have already looked into some area. Uh, and uh, you have compiled some of the thoughts and the papers available in a particular domain and uh, formulated an idea which you can pursue in PhD. But once you get admission to the program, uh, most likely you'll be working on a different problem. You may not be, uh, I mean, looking at the research proposal which you have submitted. Uh, the professors will be giving other topics to read and uh, uh, you'll be working on a different area, uh, area altogether. Yeah, thank you, sir. So one uh, question may be posted by somebody who missed the talk at the starting. When would we uh, be notified regarding the return test uh, probable month return test and interview dates for MTech in IITs? Yeah, Professor Venkatesh. Okay, so Professor Venkatesh asked me to take care of. He has to attend another uh, meeting. That's why he logged in. So uh, typically, when the candidate is being shortlisted, then you will get an email or some IITs have their own admission portal. Once the candidate apply the application there, you will get the update when is regarding that. But academic section website generally have a tentative date of admission because many departments, many programs are there. In order to streamline the admission process, they, they will have a uh, varying calendar spanning from May 15 up to July 10. 
that is a typical time period in which it is there so for phd programs or mtech programs if at all there is any test or interview it is there it will be generally happening in this some iits may prefer it online some may have it offline so since it is a completely decentralized to process i request a candidate to go through the corresponding iits academic section or admission portal in order to get the specificities okay uh, maybe we will can take another three four questions before we wind up uh, we already on times so maybe two three questions we will take it up so next question is it advisable to prepare for gate with gap after btech so the question might be after btech should the candidate uh, prepare one year for the gate exam and write or should he start preparation along with the btech which would be uh, preferred or maybe it is just up to the candidates so uh, uh, preparation along with btech as professor bengadesh mentioned earlier would be ideal uh because you don't lose any time uh for this preparation uh, part uh but if you have not really focused uh for the preparation during the time then probably uh immediately after the break or after working in industry along with working in industry you can prepare for gate or you can take a break and prepare for gate uh so uh i mean in any case uh some uh, uh, kind of uh, preparation is required to crack this exam so uh, it would be ideal to do it along with the beta program okay uh, one more question sir uh, that is does say 3 years of uh, years of work uh, no work experience gap after btech will affect in the mtech uh, placement no. after mtech generally uh, generally no but of course some companies will insist uh, some uh, minimum uh, i mean maximum gap between beta and m tech say 2 years more than 2 years they may not consider and all it depends on companies basically because uh, as such uh, uh, the opportunities may not be limited because uh, just because of the gap okay sir i think we can I just want to add yeah. uh, one point to what professor samir mentioned so when you come to an m tech program and then if you are consistently doing very well and your skills are sufficiently updated uh, during this m tech program and naturally that will be so reflected in the interview process and you can give a sufficient so justification what was the gap after btech and mtech and if they are convinced and if you are doing very well in the interview then obviously uh, you will get a placement it may not significantly affect except in 5 or 10% of companies thank you sir and uh, i think we can we have uh, just time for one more question so already we have uh, uh, reached our timeline so the question is uh, what is the job opportunity possibilities for a candidate with phd in triple it to get a teaching opportunity in nits and iits uh, uh candidates with phd from triple its will be considered for a faculty position in nits uh, I, i mean it will be like on par with a phd from uh, uh, iits and nits they will be considered uh but uh, if you want to join an iit uh, minimum requirement would be to have a degree from iit itself uh, phd from iit itself and uh, nowadays uh, 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 all these institutions iits especially are also uh, i mean uh, looking for some outside india exposure so exposure from a uh, top tier institution outside india would be ideal as a post doc experience maybe one year or two year post doc uh from uh, a leading institute in the world or uh, a good research laboratory uh, inside or outside the country would be ideal uh, for a faculty position thank you very much sir i think we will uh, we ha we have a lot of questions coming up but we will wind up with we are already on time and uh, to all the participants we will be sharing the uh, uh, link of the recording of this session uh, i think many of you would have missed the sessions during some due to some connection issues so all the comprehensive information regarding gate admission procedure etc that is that has been already discussed will be available to you in the recording and we will also uh, try to uh, share the uh, the presentations that that has also been done today to all the uh, participants who have registered now i would like to move to the formal uh, word of thanks uh, first of all we have uh, we are truly honored to have two distinguished speakers who have generously shared their insights and expertise and led enlightening us on various aspects of the gate examination process your guidance will undoubtedly serve as a beacon of light for all these aspiring candidates on behalf of the ieee kerala section ieee india council and ieee kochi subsection and the organizing committees i would like to thank dr venkatesh and dr samir 
for sharing and bringing clarity to gate examinations and the admission process. This has undoubtedly empowered our audience, guiding them on their path to success. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor John, uh, for uh, uh, inviting me to this session and uh, Professor Tega James and uh, Professor Varun for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this opportunity and uh, the interactions with the students and potential candidates is always uh, uh, quite uh, encouraging and uh, I wish all of them a great future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bye. sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. John Jose, Vice Chair, IEEE uh, India Council, for all the support in organizing this talk. So the uh, the plan of uh, organizing this uh, talk on a very important topic is from John, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, guiding us uh, in organizing and conducting a very good event for all the participants. And the one special note from this, when we planned the idea, we were looking which section or which subsection can host it. So it's always a raising hand from Kerala section or especially Kochi subsection, wherein Samir sir also played a very significant role in bringing up to Kerala section what it is. So we look forward for Samir sir to have bigger roles in the globe. We look forward for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks. Yeah, next, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Eka K. James, the chair of IEEE Kochi subsection, uh, who have uh, motivated us. Uh, uh, probably with a lot of discipline, uh, ma'am has shared a lot of details how the uh, recording should be, how the meeting should be. Ma'am, thank you ma uh, for all the guidance and motivation. Thank you, Vedran. Thank you, Samir, sir. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, to the last, uh, there is an MTech, uh, uh, there are an array of MTech programs at Kochin University of Science and Technology also, where Professor Dega James works. So uh, you can also look at the website of QSAT for more details. My special thanks to Joel John, uh, the uh, ECC coordinator, who has uh, who is doing all the uh, from the uh, who is doing all the technical work from the background. So managing the connection, hosting the event. Uh, thanks a lot, Joel. And most importantly, sincere thanks and appreciation to all the attendees who joined us from different parts of the country, demonstrating their keen interest in reaching their knowledge and skills through the platform, even on this uh, Sunday. Uh, we had a very good number of uh, participants and I am definitely sure that uh, you will be very soon joining the various NITs and IITs and will be the torch bearers of innovation in our country. So uh, thank you very much, uh, all the participants. And I am so happy and uh, uh, that th uh, this session has lots of, uh, I, I had a hard time in compiling the questions because uh, still now the questions are being posted. So uh, I normally I don't like to say no to a question, but uh, we are already running out of time. We had around 50 plus questions and we were able to uh, uh, able to answer at least 25, uh, half of the questions. So thank you all the participants for the excellent participation and involvement in this uh, session. Thank you. Once again, thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you.